An A-type main sequence star is a hydrogen burning star measuring between 1.4 and 2.1 solar masses. Bright and nearby examples are Altair, Sirius A and Vega. Hi everyone, Vega here, and in today's video we're going to be looking at my favourite type of star, the white A-type. So let's get to it. I admit it, Fomalhaut is a star that I've neglected. It didn't seem all that interesting on the surface. My thinking was that it was in the southern hemisphere so I couldn't see it from my home, and it failed to outshine Sirius Vega or Altair. And I'll be honest, I always thought it had a bit of a strange name. That's why it's the last star of our 25 brightest to get a mention on our channel. But how wrong could I be? Fomalhaut is actually one of the most fascinating stars I've ever come across. We know that A-type stars are short-lived, which includes Fomalhaut, but on the plus side, A-type stars are thought not to harbour a magnetic dynamo. What this means is that, as a consequence, this does make the stars more interesting precisely because they don't have strong stellar winds. In terms of habitability, their lifespans are thought to be in the range of 500 million years to 1 billion years, which while likely too short for complex life to form, does not preclude basic life that could theoretically then spread to other parts of the galaxy. The huge positive of this lack of solar wind means the possibility of a wide-ranging habitable zone where fragile atmospheres are not dangerously at risk of being blown away. In this graphic we see the relative size of Fomalhaut compared to other A-class stars and our own Sun. We can see that it has a mass of just under two solar masses and an A3V designation, which actually means it's a fairly run-of-the-mill A-class star. Renowned for being fast-spinning stars, A-type stars like the famous Vega or Altair as we see here often take the form of a strange egg-like shape, but it doesn't apply to all. Sirius and Fomalhaut have a more regular circular form. The habitable zone for Fomalhaut would begin somewhere between 2.8 and 3 astronomical units, and possibly stretch out as far as 7 astronomical units for a very, very cold world with perhaps liquid water only in the most warm parts of the equator. With little solar wind to worry about, if this was replicated in our own solar system, instead of having just two habitable worlds of Earth and Mars, we'd also be able to include many more bodies like Ceres, the asteroid belt, as well as the moons and maybe even the giant planet of Jupiter itself under certain conditions. So again, although ATAP stars are short-lived relatively speaking, we should definitely not rule them out for possible primitive life forms. Here is a list of A-type properties. The spectrotrike A0V, or I should really say A05, is the largest and closest to becoming a B-type blue star, and the A9V type is the smallest and closest to being like an F-type star which is a bit like Procyon, although still on the main sequence. Many surveys indicate massive planets also commonly form around A-type stars. These stars typically evolve into K-giant stars, and you may know some of these like Pollux Gamma C Phi or Iota Draconis. Fomalhaut itself carries the designation Alpha Pisces Austrini, and is the brightest star in the constellation of Pisces Austrinus, or the Southern Fish as it's more commonly known. Fomalhaut is the 19th brightest star in the sky. At 25 light years from the Sun, the interest begins as it is classified as a Vega-like star that emits excess infrared radiation. Now those of you that have seen the Vega video will know that it is surrounded by a circumstellar disk, and although originally thought to have a planet, analysis of its existing and new data suggests more likely that Fomalhaut is an expanding dust disk resulting from collisions, although it's still unclear whether this is actually the reality. At a declination of minus 29.6 degrees, Fomalhaut is located south of the celestial equator, and hence is best viewed from the southern hemisphere. But again, I was wrong because the southern declination is not as far as south as other stars such as Acrux, Alpha Centauri or Canopus, and it means like unlike them, Fomalhaut is actually visible from a large part of the northern hemisphere as well as being best seen in autumn. So why is Fomalhaut so interesting then? It is surrounded by several debris disks. The inner disk clusters in at around 0.1 astronomical units from the star, and then there's a further out disk of larger particles with an inner edge around 0.4 to 1 astronomical units of the star. The outermost disk is at a much further distance of 133 astronomical units, and the dust is distributed in a belt that's around 25 astronomical units wide. Sometimes referred to as Fomalhaut's Kuiper belt, Fomalhaut's dusty disk is believed to be protoplanetary. Measurements of Fomalhaut's rotation also indicate that the disk is located in the star's equatorial plane, much like our own solar system and other theories of star and planet formation. If Fomalhaut B planet does exist, it could be surrounded by debris, so it may be a gravitationally bound accumulation of rubble rather than a whole planet. 
Imagery also suggests that a large amount of micrometer sized dust is present in the outer dust belt. And because normally such dust would be expected to be blown out of the system in most cases, its presence indicates a constant replenishment by collisions of planetesimals. What this means is that fascinatingly, that we're literally seeing the process of the Fomalhaut system family being created before our very eyes. Incredibly, the collision rate is estimated to be approximately 2,000 kilometer sized comets per day. And what's also particularly incredible is the system itself has an uncanny resemblance to the Eye of Sauron in the Lord of the Rings trilogy movies. Not only this, but like Saruman is to Sauron in those movies, for those of you that know that franchise, Fomalhaut appears to have a dimmer partner star that it dominates. The K4 type star of TW Pisces Austrini lies quite a long way from Fomalhaut at 0.91 light years, but its radial velocity agrees with that of Fomalhaut, which makes it a likely bound companion. While smaller than the Sun, it is a relatively large K-type flare star, given that most flare stars are red M dwarf stars. In today's final graphic, we see what a scene might look like if Sirius, Vega and Fomalhaut were to appear at one light year's distance from planet Earth. For reference, I've also included the Sun as if it were at one light year, and Venus as we actually see from our own planet Earth now. Shining brightly in our skies, we see that they would shine much brighter than anything else we've ever seen, apart from our own Sun. In our local area, amazingly, there are just four A-class stars within 35 light years. You might think of the usual suspects of Sirius, Vega and Altair, but there is a fourth that we should always add to that list, and never ever overlook, Fomalhaut. It gives us a view of a real-life solar system in formation before our very eyes. The Eye of Sauron, Fomalhaut is without doubt a very, very interesting system indeed. Thanks for watching and consider subscribing if you haven't already. If you'd like to support the channel further, you could consider buying me a coffee and I'll link this in the description and thanks to those of you that already have. If you have any other videos or subjects you'd like to see brought to life, don't forget to let me know in the comments below and it could just be your idea that shows up next week. Take really good care of yourselves and look after your friends and family well and I'll see you on the next one.